Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Creating New Horizons in Heart Failure Treatment, presented in partnership with HeartSeed. I'm Jake White, I'm Senior Manager for Development and Strategic Partnerships at the American Physiological Society, and I'm happy to join you today to share this exciting science with you. Now, before we get started, there are a few details we'd like to address. This webinar is being recorded and will be shared with attendees following the event. To maintain integrity and respect for your colleagues, we ask that you refrain from any photo or video capture of any part of today's presentation. Uh, please use the Q&A feature found at the bottom of your Zoom screen to submit questions for the presenter at any time during the event. Questions will be addressed by the speaker at the end of the presentation. Additionally, live captions are available for this program. To turn on captions, please click the live transcript icon on the bottom of your Zoom screen and select the appropriate choice. Now, it is my pleasure to hand the program over to Dr. Takahiko Kaniko, Chief Medical Officer and Head of Research and Development at HeartSeed to kick off today's event. Dr. Kaniko, whenever you're ready. Yep. Thank you, Jake, for introduction. Now, I'm Takehiko Kaneko, the Chief Medical Officer and Head of R&D at Hachi. The Today, uh, I would like to present uh, our cutting-edge technology for heart failure treatment using the regenerative medical product. The, our mission is uh, unlocking the potential of iPS cells starting from cardiovascular diseases. Our goal is to change the world with regenerative medicine. We strongly believe that the cell therapy has such potential. HeartSeed has the ability to make this happen. This is, my, this is our uh, corporate highlights. HeartSeed was founded in 2015, headquartered in Tokyo, Japan. And we have raised $75 million to date. Our company has a small organization with only 30 employees and is very proud of making a collaboration and licensing partnership with Novo Nordic, a European big pharmaceutical company, which was announced during COVID-19 pandemic. We were also selected as the one of the top five startups developing the cardiovascular drugs out of 300 companies globally. Our lead pipeline HS001 is allogeneic iPS cell-derived cardiomyocyte. And we have initiated the patient recruit recruitment of its rapid study, phase one to a company-sponsored clinical study, and expect to start the first dosing soon. We are aiming to be a commercial stage company in the next few years and further expand our global pipeline for cardiology and beyond. Our advantage is a platform technology for cardiac stem cell therapy, which are based on the over 20 years research achievements of Professor Keiichi Fukuda, the world leading physician scientist in the field. Our co-founder and CEO Keiichi Fukuda has seen many patients suffering from heart failure. Heart failure treatment has progressed because new drugs, including SCLT2 inhibitor and nephrilizing inhibitor, showed good results in recent clinical studies. Despite the progress of the treatment, a heart transplant still heart transplant is still the only curative option for several heart failure uh, for severe heart failure. To overcome this situation, he founded HeartSeed and beca became a, the CEO with an unwavering commitment to saving patients, while also as an academic professor at a top-ranked university in Japan. Fukuda discovered for the first time in the world that the cardiomyocytes can be de derived from bone marrow stroma cells in 1999, which marked the beginning of cardiac regenerative medicine. And it is difficult to make a large number of cardiomyocytes with this method. He switched to use the pluripotent stem cells, which can grow 
indefinitely. This is the image of the heart failure. Heart failure is a serious condition in which the heart's capacity to pump blood is restricted. As you can see in the echocardiogram, the movement of the cardiac muscle in the heart failure patient is much weaker compared to the healthy heart state. The heart cannot supply enough blood to meet the oxygen need of the body, leaving many patients feeling out of breath, try and try are tired and sometimes in pain, potentially leading to hospitalization or death. Over 65 million patients are suffering from heart failure worldwide, and the number is on the rise. The current drug therapies are used to reduce the burden on the heart, but do not address the root cause of the heart disease. Since cardiomyocytes cannot regenerate, and the patients are significantly short of donors for heart transplant, the disease prognosis is still poor, and making the heart disease the leading cause of the death. When we review the history of the clinical studies for cell therapy in heart failure, we can categorize cell therapy products into four cell types. The first is the skeletal myoblast or skeletal muscle cell. The second one is bone marrow bone nuclear cell. The third is mesenchymal stem cells or cardiac stem cells. And the last is embryonic stem cell derived products or induced pluripotent stem cell IPSC derived product. A Japanese company obtained approval for new drug application of skeletal muscle cell sheet called heart sheet in 2015. Uh, 2015. This product is used for treatment for severe heart failure. Mesoblast, an Australian, an Australian company, completed a phase 3 study, Dream HF study of Revascol, mesenchymal pre precursor cell. The study didn't meet the primary endpoint. However, it showed the efficacy in a part of high risk patients. In the last Five years, several clinical studies using stem cell derived products started. Our group also starts an investigator initiated clinical study, uh, investigated initiated clinical study for dilated cardiomyopathy and a company sponsored clinical study for heart failure due to ischemic heart disease called rapid study. The previous cell therapies shown on the left did not use cardiomyocytes because there were many technical hurdles. Instead, other types of the cells were used, such as a skeletal myoblast, bone marrow mononuclear cell, or mesenchymal stem cell. These mechanisms of the action are called the paracrine head, meaning the transplanted cells release cytokines, growth factors, and microRNAs, which possibly heal the damaged heart. The transplanted cells don't engraft and disappear in a couple of months. Compared with this, our approach, shown on the right, uses iPSC-derived cardiomyocytes, which are directly transplanted into the left ventricular wall and replace the damaged tissue. This is called bead muscularization. Through electrical coupling, these cells can engraft in a patient's myocardium long term and contribute to direct contractile force. In preclinical pre studies using large animals, robust improvements of cardio cardiac function was confirmed with a high response rate. We are convinced that this will be the best in class cardiac stem cell therapy for advanced heart failure. The first generation of regenerated cardiomyocytes 
in 1990s, Fukuda's group made a cardiomyocytes from mesenchymal stem cells. The bone marrow aspirates from mice were obtained and cultured for a few passages and removed floating cells. Attached cells on the dish were treated with five other citidine to induce differentiation. On the right side, you can see the beating cell. Those cells are uh, the MSC mesenchymal stem cell derived cardiomyocyte. At that time, five other citizen was not approved for human use in any country. In addition, this method is sufficient for in vitro uh, or small animal studies, but they can't get the large number of cardiomyocytes for clinical use using this method. Therefore, uh, they needed to find out a new strategy. Instead of mesenchymal stem cell, Dr. Fukuda's group focused on the embryonic stem cell. To identify critical factors of, of differentiation into cardiomyocytes, they performed the four month in situ hybridization on mouse embryos. On the left side, the four month in situ hybridization of Noggin and NKX 2.5 was performed at mouse embryo. That is, day 9, uh, 7.5, 8.0, 8.25, 8.5, and 9.0. Arrows indicate the heart. The noggin was strongly expressed at the cardiac crescent E7.5 embryo and the late crescent stage E8.0, but was undetected after E8.0, as you can see. In contrast, MKX was expressed thereafter E8.5, E9.0, you will see the color in the uh, heart region. These findings suggested that the transient expression of noggin functions in cardiomyocyte differentiation. In the middle, the chart shows the efficiency of various protocols for noggin exposure. Noggin was added to the medium before and or after embryo embryoid body formation to mimic the tran transient and strong expression of noggin at the early gastrulation stage. Administration of noggin at the day minus three and day zero from embryoid body formation led to a marked increase in beating embryo body incidence to 95.3% at 10 days and continued growth of embryo, embryo bodies to day 14. These results suggest that the cardiomyocyte inducive activity of Nagi was restricted to the period from three days before, one day after embryo, embryo body formation and that the ES cells must initially undifferentiate it. Another factor for cardiomyocyte differentiation from embryonic stem cell is GCSF, granulocyte pony stimulating factor. GCSF is a glycoprotein that stimulate the bone marrow to produce granulocytes and stem cells and release them into the blood. Dr. Fukuda's group reviewed another role of GCSF. GCSF promoted the proliferation of cardiomyocytes. On the left side, GCSF receptors are green. Uh, on the left side, GCSF receptors were expressed in the heart of mouse embryo at E9.5. In the same age of mouse embryo, the GCSF receptor 
stain red dot is co-localized with alpha actinin, which is marker of cardiomyocyte in the heart at E9.5, the same area were activated. So based on the research findings of the cardiogenesis, we use Nogin, wind inhibitor, and GCSF for cardiomyocyte production from human embryonic stem cell. And we also confirm that it's applicable to the production from iPS. Many research groups already established the protocol of the differentiation from iPS cell to cardiomyocyte and conducted non clinical studies. But the teratoma was observed in those studies. Teratoma is a type of tumor that may contain the several different types of the tissue, as you can see, such as hair, muscle, and bone. Typical teratoma comes from germ cells. However, many animal studies reported that transplanted undifferentiated iPSC causes teratoma. If iPSCs remain, they have a higher teratoma formation risk than differentiated cells. So eliminating residual iPS residual iPSCs will greatly improve the safety of cell therapy. To eliminate undifferentiated iPS cells, we focus on the cell metabolism. There is a difference between iPS cells and cardiomyocytes. As you can see in the left side of the slide, iPS cells can synthesize ATPs from glucose and glutamine. Without glucose and glutamine, iPS cells can't make ATP and cells can't survive. A figure on the right side shows the metabolism of cardiomyocytes. Cardiomyocytes can synthesize ATP from lactate and survive without glucose and glutamine. Next slide shows how we utilize the difference for our manufacturing process. Based on the findings from metabolic assay, we created the special medium for purification of cardiomyocytes. The medium includes lactate and does not include glucose and glutamine. Just changing cell culture medium enables us to eliminate most of the non cardiomyocytes and iPS cells. Furthermore, unsuitable immature cardiomyocytes can also be removed by this method. So we can obtain appropriately matured cardiomyocytes. This method is quite powerful for making stem cell derived cardiomyocytes. These are videos showing the cardiomyocyte cells before and after our purification, our purification process with special media. Uh oh. On the left, before purification, there are dots of non-beating. Uh, there are dots of lots of non-beating cells in the interspace for beating cardiomyocyte cells. However, on the right side, after purification, since undifferentiated stem cells and non-cardiomyocyte cells are eliminated, there is nothing empty in the interspace of beating cardiomyocyte cells. You can see small dots, small dots of the interspace. Those are just dead cells, which has no effect onto anything. We also find another strategy to eliminate undifferentiated iPS cells. Left three figures 
show the results of proteomic analysis. The proteomic data revealed distinct differences between the two serotypes. Differentially expressed proteins include ATP citrate lyase, HLY, and fatty acid synthase, FASN. Both involved in de novo fatty acid synthesis to so store energy and make cell membrane. Fatty acid synthesis inhibitor, Oristat added to the culture medium after differentiation. Left slide shows the comparison between control and Oristat treated culture after differentiation. Control has lots of the red dots, which, which are OCT4 positive cells. OCT4 positive cells are IPS cells. Green dots are alpha actinin positive cells which means differentiated cardiomyocyte. On the right side, we also tried all the stat method for neural cell differentiation. All the stat also eliminate, eliminate undifferentiated IPJ cells after neural differentiation. So this method is also applicable for neural, differenti neural cell differentiation. Based on the, our technology, we created purified cardiomyocyte from IPS cells. However, engraftment of the cardiomyocyte transplantation is only 3%. So we have to make huge number of cardiomyocytes for clinical use in the, in the uh, retention, in this retention rate. To improve engraftment, we make superoids by purified cardiomyocytes. The cardiomyocytes are poured into the, this special plate with many dimples. After 96 hours, the cardiocytes, cardiomyocytes form the superoid. It's around 150 micrometer diameter and starts beating spontaneously. Right, right lower side, this is a, a visual of the motion vector and you will see the beating with car. Upper slide, Upper side of this slide shows the mouse embryonic stem cell derived cardiomyocyte superoid transplantation. Lower side is a human embryonic stem cell derived cardiomyocyte superoid transplantation. In both vitro, uh, vivo studies, we achieved, as you can see, the, the, in both vivo studies, we achieved a high retention rate and the cardiomyocytes gradually Grew with striated pattern and high retention rate. So, superior formation will work to improve the retention rate. This slide shows the proof of mechanism for engraftment. We transplanted human cardiomyocyte superiors into Nogmice uh, heart. As you can see, the photo on the left side. At four months after transplantation, cardiomyocytes, which were stained in red with CD30, CD31, showed themselves well, engraf uh, well engrafted. We confirmed that the cardiomyocytes get engrafted, matured, and enlarged, well, as parts of heart muscle with significant uh, vascularization. And right side, video on the right side is showing that the human cardiomyocytes injected to the nogmice skin and get well engrafted and keep beating 
even at the one year after transplantation. Interestingly, the cardiomyocytes are human、uh, iPS driver cells. However, the blood vessels come from the nog mouse. So the mouse blood vessel connect to the human iPS cell drive the cardio. This movie was provided by the, our research collaborator, Professor Shiba from Shinshu University, Nagano, Japan. It shows that the beating of grafted cardiomyocytes as brain crushes, the transplanted cells at three separate sites are flushing simultaneously, which means that the transplanted cells are beating in synchrony with the host myocardium. We also would like to show the results of non clinical study. The left side is rat study, and right side is pig study. In the rat study, we、uh, use the three arm one is control arm, and another is single cell injection arm, and the third one is spheroid transplantation arm. In the results, The s u p e r i o r transplantation arm improves the left ventricular ejection function, which means the hunk function of the heart. And the control arm and the single cell arm doesn't improve the heart function. On the right side, PIC study showed the improvement of the left ventricular ejection function as well as the RAT study. Compared to the control arm, almost 15 points. Improvement of the ejection fraction. And we also did the study for, we also completed the study for monkey. And we also transplanted human IPS derived cardiomyocyte into ischemic monkeys and the immunosuppressants. Engraftment of human cardiomyocytes was observed even in monkeys without inflammation. This suggests that the immune rejection of our cardiomyocytes is limited.、Uh -oh. yep. Arrhythmia was reported based on the results of animal studies by several other groups. The mechanism of, mechanism of arrhythmia is considered to be automaticity. Which happens when the beating rate of transplanted cells is higher than the host myocardium and when no electrical coupling occurs. In our monkey study, sustained ventricular tachycardia was confirmed in only one monkey out of five, but the duration was only nine minutes on day 14. This was significantly lower in incidence rate and shorter in duration than previous studies conducted by other groups. The articles of those studies said ventricular tachycardia was observed for 10 hours per day. This is possibly because our IPS derived cardiomyocytes are ventricular specific cardiomyocytes with no pacemaker cells and minimized dead cardiomyocytes. Thanks to the high viability achieved by super transplantation. And efficacy is also good. The fractional shortening and the f o r c e engraftment was com、uh, confirmed in the pathological finding. We also,、uh, to improve the retention rate, we also developed the special needles for cell transplantation for human use. The, as you can see, the tips of the needle is blunt and the needle has a side fold. This needle will not cut the、uh, heart muscle. We're just pushing out the heart muscle and、uh, inject the cells,、uh, inject the cardiomyocyte without.、Uh, With a small breathing. 
relatively small bleeding than typical injection needle. With this device, cardiac surgeons can transplant a certain amount of the cells at a constant rate, simultaneously at three locations. Next slide shows a, this slide shows a video of the image of the cardiomyocyte transplantation. As you can see, this is a needle, the special needle, and we use the adapter, adapter attached with the uh, octopus, the, the heart surgery system. And uh, we can uh, insert the needle with the same angle and inject the uh, uh, cardiomyocyte spheroid. And the cardiomyocyte spheroid start to grow and uh, mature and help and support the beating. So to make the remuscularization happen, there were several critical challenges. Most importantly, we needed to establish how to deliver the cells and what kind of cells to be delivered. So what is special about our approach is that uh, we are using the small spheroids for cardiomyocytes and uh, we use uh, special needles to transplant cardiomyocytes. Based on those, uh, findings and uh, using those devices, we will start the clinical study. That is a phase one to clinical study called RAPIS. After we had a promising non clinical study data, uh, study data, we start the first in human study called RAPIS study. Here is an overview of the study design. 10 patients will be enrolled, five for low dose, five for high dose. Key inclusion criteria are patient with viper surgery, injection fraction less than 40%, NYHA class 2 to 4. By, combine, uh, by combining cell transplantation with viper surgery, we can reduce the patient's burden while securing blood flow, which should be the key for the cardiomyocyte to be engrafted with ischemic heart failure patient's myocardium. The primary endpoint are safety and durability. Key secondary endpoints include the ejection fraction and the factors related to the proof of mechanism, such as a wall motion and blood flow. If the proof of mechanism and ejection fraction improvements are demonstrated in advanced heart failure patients without major safety concern, it will clearly differentiate it uh, differentiate our therapy from other approaches. The future pipeline, but let's move on to the personalized portrova therapy. While the off the shelf treatment is much easier for business operation, the biggest advantage of portrova's ITSC is that we can manufacture and use the patient's own IPSC without immunosuppressant. This is important for advanced stage patients such as the, those using LVAD, left ventricular assisting device. The hurdles of autologous therapy are inefficiently of manufacturing IPSC from patient's blood and the variance of the IPSC's quality. In particular, differentiation efficiency into desired cell. Heart seeds has a proprietary technology to overcome these issues by co-transfecting H1FOO, which I will explain on the next slide. DNA shown here as an orange thread wraps around the histone and it's folded into the compact shape. There are two states, a root state called 
called euchromatin, and in which transcription of DNA is activated, and a tightly wrapped state called heterochromatin, in which transcription is suppressed. HRF04 is one of the linker histone proteins specifically expressed from oocyte to early four cell stage. OO is taken from oocyte. HRF04 differs from other linker, other linker histones in its ability to loosen DNA and promote the expression of specific gene. It is known that there are cases that the reprogramming of somatic cells is insufficient when prospecting reprogramming factors, and H1FO may support the regeneration of a more suitable chromatin state, euchromatin, for reprogramming. As you can see on the left hand side, the OSK, OSK means the OCT, SOX, KRE are reprogramming factors used for IPSC manufacturing. But the efficiency of manufacturing IPSCs with those three factors is still quite low. Adding H1FOO, the chromatin is losing and the uh, efficiency to obtain the IPS quality is efficiency is eightfold based on the uh, based on the articles related to this experiment. Now let us explain the unrivaled transplantation technology for IPSC derived cardiomyocyte surveillance. Our therapy can be applied both to allogenic and autologous IPS cells. In strategic perspective, at the first step, we will develop and commercialize allogenic therapy using HLA haplotype for more IPSC. Then we will, write, we will expand the lineup to autologous therapy going forward. This therapy is a bit hard with the four of our own distinctive technology, differentiation, purification, spread formation, and transplantation. First of all, differentiation. We have, as you can see in the previous slides, we have developed, developed our own cardiomyocyte differentiation culture solution. Combined with the ex existing low molecular compounds based differentiation induction method, we can produce the ventricular specific cardiomyocyte, which work for pumping function of heart. By differentiating into ventricular specific cardiomyocyte when transplanted, the risk of arrhythmia can expect expectedly be reduced. For purification, we have succeeded in developing culture solution which removes undifferentiated IPS cell inexpensively and easily. By utilizing the difference of energy metabolism between cardiomyocytes and other cells, our unique culture solution enables only cardiomyocytes to survive. Realizing over 99% of those purity, since undifferentiated IPS cells are not to be transplanted, the risk of teratoma formation can be drastically reduced. As for the third step, spheroid formation, we have developed, developed a method for efficient transplantation by creating cardiomyocyte spheroid, in which about 1,000 cardiomyocytes are aggregated and transplanting them into the heart tissue. This method allows <coughs> the cardiomyocytes to get engrafted in heart tissue <coughs> excuse me, at a rate of 25 time, times as high as that of single cell transplantation. 
regarding the finals of transplantation. There are two methods to become available. One is direct injection in conjunction with open heart CABG surgery. The other is less invasive, the catheter based injection from ventricular cap cavity being navigated to aorta from groin vessel. We have already developed, developed the direct injection devices which will be used for the first in human clinical trial. That cassette, the catheter injection procedure, procedure is currently under development with Novonoid. The trial with the catheter will follow going forward. So far, we focused our express our explanation mainly on HS001, which is an allogeneic iPSC-derived cardiomyocyte steroid to treat heart failure patients. As we mentioned earlier, it is the only beginning. Our platform technologies, which is realized HS001, can be applied to the other, to the other types of the cells, therapies and diseases. Our differentiation technology, which enabled to differentiate iPS cells specifically into ventricular cardiomyocytes, can undoubtedly be used for autologous cardiomyocytes, in another word, tailor-made cardiomyocytes. These could be provide a heart failure patient with extra safety since they no longer needed to take immunosuppressive drugs. Secondary, another patented platform technology called H1F04, which enabled to induce mature cells to become pluripotent even more efficiently with higher consistency. IPS cell banks in Japan, including Saira, which IPS inventor and Nobel Prize winner Dr. Yamanaka founded, have shown in have shown great interest into it. We expect to license it out to global non-exclusively. When it comes to third platform technology, purification and metabolic selection, it enables to completely eliminate undifferentiated IPSs, consequently reducing the risk of the tumor formation. The last two platform technologies we shared with you will be able to contribute not only to cardiovascular disease related cell therapy, but also others. We already confirmed in the uh, neural cell differentiation. In other words, this will help accelerate the industrialization of overall cell therapy universe. Here's the last side of summary. The first, while leading cardiac demuscularization therapy for advanced heart failure with huge AMET medical needs. Second, best in class lead platform, a uh, lead program with high commercial potential partnered with novel notice. Three, platform technologies for industrialization of mediated medicine, driving long term growth. Four, Top class industry experts led by Dr. Fukuda rare to realize the strategic vision. So the, we have the best in class program and unique technology and a strong collaboration with Novonoid to industrialize our therapy to the, uh, our therapy to the worldwide. Yeah, thank you for your patience. Thank you so much, Dr. Kaniko, for that wonderful presentation. Um, let's take some time now to answer some questions um, that have been submitted. If you have already not done so, please submit any questions you have for Dr. Kaniko using the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. Okay. So 
question that was submitted, the first question was uh, from Joseph Rausch from Wayne State University, and it's a two-part question. Uh -huh. uh, the first is, how might the nature of scar tissue matrix affect the success of myocardial remuscularization with cell-based therapies? Yeah, that's, thank you for your question. Um, of course, we uh, try to confirm the uh, reverse remodeling with our cell therapy product, but uh, especially for Actually, the, we inject, we transplant, we, uh, so far in the non-clinical studies and uh, clinical studies, uh, we will, uh, in non-clinical studies, we transplanted our cells into the border of the ischemic region and non-ischemic region. Of course, for like uh, previous cell therapy, if the cells injected in the scar, maybe, reverse remodeling occurs and improve the, you know, or change the skull into the uh, normal, you know, the maybe myocardium or something. But our cell therapy is uh, focused on the remuscularization. So to uh, achieve engraftment, the uh, blood supply is necessary. So the center of the scar, if inject the cell center of the scar, I'm wondering whether it works or not. In that situation, probably the, at first, we focus on the um, border area of between the ischemic region and the healthy region. So it's hard to see the, you know, the uh, efficacy on the scar tissue. That's, uh, that, yeah, that's my answer. Thank you, Dr. Kaniko. I appreciate it. Um, and Shania Davidson uh, has asked, would this be applicable to patients that have, have had myocardial infarction or uh, is this technology strictly for heart failure? Yeah, uh, of course, you know, the applicable to the patient with uh, myocardial infarction. And uh, so far, I mean, after myocardial infarction, but you know, the, this type of the patient is not so severe. At first, you know, since it needs a, a open heart surgery and our treatment also needs an immunosuppressor. In that situation, at first in our clinical study, we focus on the uh, severe heart failure. But of course, it's this patient, uh, this treatment is also applicable to the myocardial infarction, whole population of myocardial infarction. So to, you know, but we also need to reduce the immunosuppressants for next pipeline. So we start to, uh, we start some research about the uh, hypoimmune cells or uh, universal cells and differentiated into the cardiomyopathy. Great, thank you for your answer. Uh, Lee Kwan Kai has asked, when transplanting human-induced pluripotent stem cells derived from cardiomyocytes into the damaged heart, these cells are differentiated or mature cardiocytes, not progenitor cells. How do you explain the result of the graft study? Okay, so... Yeah, these cells are differentiated and mature, kind of mature. I mean, the shape of the uh, brand new IPS cells derived the cardiomyocytes is a kind of a round shape. But uh, as you know, mature cardiomyocytes is a you know, bit longer shape. So the usually we, you know, uh, completed the uh, differentiation, the purification process at a certain date. But uh, after that, we also, con we can also, 
we also continue the uh, culture of the our cardio myocyte and uh, gradually shapes become different and the maturation factor is very good, the positive and gradually good, maturated. And uh, in the uh, non-clinical study using the, of course, uh, the, that study used the ESC line, but uh, we also confirmed the similar, uh, similar findings with the IPS cell diagnosis. And uh, as you can see, this is ESC cell. However, the uh, spheroid transplanted at, at first, spheroid, the each shell shape like uh, round, not so much, right? but the gradually, uh, as you can see, the sh shapes with the uh, uh, shapes are gradually longer with a unique pattern of the cardiomyocyte uh, or myocardium. So the it means that the matured after transplantation in the animal body. That's our hypothesis. Thank you. Great answer. Um, Brandon Spencer Lockey has asked, just to confirm, are you making the induced plur pluripotent stem cells from patients' blood samples, the patient's own blood sample? Uh, also, uh, he has asked, how big are the spheroids uh, and how many cells do the uh, are there per spheroid? Okay, so IPSC comes from the uh, uh, yeah, patient's blood, that's right. And uh, the size of the spheroid is, uh, its diameter is uh, 150 micrometer. And the number of the cells, the average is 150. And number of the cells is uh, 400 to 1,000. Thank you. Um, and lastly, uh, Dr. Richard Schultz uh, has asked, do you know what is the local status of immune cells at the site of injection during engraft? engraftment, as not all injected cardiomyocytes will survive, uh, and what kind of immune cells are present there? Yeah, that's a good question. Actually, the monkey study that uh, it's, you know, xenograft transplantation, so we had to use immunosuppressant. So under the immunosuppressants, mm, fortunately, there is no immune reaction, so it's hard to Actually, it's hard to predict. <laughs> it's hard to answer this question. However, uh, we also do some in vitro analysis of the, especially the HLA expression of our cardiomyocyte. And the HLA class one is um, under the stimulation of the interferon gamma of our cardiomyocyte, iPS of the cardiomyocyte. HLA class one is expressed, and the HLA class two is not expressed. So in that situation, the probably the right after the surgery, the uh, local concentration of the interferon gamma might be increased. So it will stimulate to express the HLA class one. That will be introduce the immune reaction, but. I'm not sure which cell will be, which cell type, which immune cell type will be involved. Thank you. Um, another question actually from uh, Lee Kwang Kai. I read articles talking about connection of the grafted myocytes with endogenous cardiomyocytes. Did you find this issue? And if so, how did you synchronize their uh, contraction movements? Okay. The... Our cardiomyocytes are positive of the myosin light chain 2V. And uh, we also check the uh, automaticity of our cell. Our IPS cell that have the cardiomyocyte has uh, usually the, around the 20 beats, 20 or not, 20 or 25 beats per minute. It's really slow. In that situation, I mean, it's much slower than other part of the heart. So the original beating is too slow. That's why it's easy to synchronize to the other cardiomyocytes. 
we also need to think about the uh, electric connection with the cardiomyocyte. We confirm that the uh, established electric connection of the between the uh, original uh, cardio uh, recipients cardiomyocytes and transplanted iPS receptor cardiomyocytes. Thank you for that. Um, and the last question, because we uh, are coming up on the hour, uh, is the phase one slash phase two clinical trial finished slash, or is it still going? Uh, and when is the next one going to occur? That's a good question, still ongoing. I mean, uh, it needs a, a bypass surgery. And uh, under the coronavirus outbreak, after, actually after the bypass surgery, People need to stay at the intensive care unit, but uh, lots of the uh, intensive care units are secured to for severe corona COVID nineteen patient. In that situation, the most of sites have to stop the bypass surgery, <laughs> so it it was hard to enroll. That was the situation, but gradually you know, the situation become better, so we start to enroll the patient. And the study is still ongoing. Great, thank you so much. Um, so that is all the time uh, that we have um, as we're wrapping up here. I just want to thank, say thank you very much to you, Dr. Kaniko, uh, and the entire HeartSeed team for your willingness to share uh, your work with us today. Uh, and I want to thank everyone uh, in the audience who joined us. Um, we will have a a recording available um, for, that's a sh shareable recording for, for on-demand viewing uh, later this evening. After you close out of today's program, we do ask that you please take a moment to complete the webinar survey uh, that will automatically pop up just to provide some feedback on, on the topics today and to, to help us select some new topics uh, in the future. All right, well, we appreciate it. Thank you again for joining us uh, and we wish you a great rest of your day. And uh, if you have any questions? I have. I have our trust. Yeah, I. Uh, yeah, I added my email address. So please feel to contact me. Great. Thank you so much. Yep. Thank you so much. Take care.